Republican Representative Senator Clarita Johnson from the 114th District, which is on the city of the city of the city of the city of the city. Surprise, uh, in a sense, because in this economic time we're in, as, as we all know, I mean, if you said to most people, um, the world can end in the next four years and you'll be guaranteed a job, the world can end in the next four years, and in addition to being guaranteed a job, you will have an over 10% um, increase in your salary. Just those two things, and you know themselves, most people would say that's not such a bad deal. But now, don't get me wrong, I mean, whether it's union, non-union, state employees, private employees, we all work hard every day. You know, put on the table, provide for our family. So, you know, it, it's not as if one person is better than the other. And, and clearly, there is a, con- a binding contract. So the union, um, the state union workers, they don't have to agree to anything, of course. But unfortunately, the governor has one ability um, if they don't agree to some deal in their playoff. So, you know, that's been the issue. Should I lay off people or should we make a deal? So he made the deal he believed was the best deal. Um, he could make it and offered it to them. And, and as most people know at this point, it was not ratified because you would have to agree to it by ratifying it. And they didn't. There's much suggestion to me that the leadership may not have to be forceful to them to their membership the important aspect. The government itself did offer to go anywhere and to talk to anybody who clearly there on it, and he was not qualified. I think he went certain places, but you are correct. He said, I'll do whatever it takes to get this done. And, and to his credit, um, he was public about that. You know, it wasn't as if in some meeting he whispered to somebody, you know, if you want me to go, I'll go. He was clearly public about that. I think, unfortunately, there are 15 bargaining units, and each one kind of operates, operates in a sense, as its own little um, municipality, kind of. And each one probably, one was more effective in communicating its message than the other. One probably had more meetings than the other. And I think that was the problem. You weren't dealing with one big group where one person was giving the message and answering the questions and, and that kind of thing. And I think that was the issue that there's not just one set of union leaders for all of them because each one has their own mini set. So I think that there was the, the communication wasn't as clear as it should be, mm-hmm. and therefore the message wasn't as clear. And therefore, you know, you have your union leaders and then you have your rank and file. And just from the people I ran into on a daily basis, people were not clear as to what that message was, what the topic was. I don't understand how that could be. You know, because if I was in charge of one of those unions, I'd say, here's the deal. This is what I think is good. This is what I think isn't so good. But this is what I think overall. And unfortunately, you know, we are, the governor speaks day after day about shared sacrifice. When you know your next door neighbor who is in the private sector is losing his home, losing his car, you know, taking his kids out of school, that kind of thing, it doesn't seem so bad. It's all relative. Well, the other benefit that there are, the health benefits and all these other things that you should come to the table along the way, but I think the chance of the private sector is to get kids back to the very much more and lose a job along the way, which is the bad thing. Exactly, and that's the shame of it. Because as I said when we first brought this up today, you know, four years job security, pay increase at, at the end of that four years. I mean, those are things, if you, your, I think the emergency room uh, co-pay went up to a certain extent. So there were some other changes, but overall, it wasn't a bad deal. And here's what the problem is. Way back in the day, when state employees got offered 
these kind of practices really help care and that kind of thing. The reason for that is because people didn't want to work in the public sector. They got paid much more money in the private sector. So there had to be some incentive to get people there, which is reasonable. But it's kind of shifted throughout time, and now people would rather work in the public sector because the salaries are decent, but the health care is wonderful, um, you know, the time off, vacation, that kind of thing is great. And at a certain point when it has moved throughout the spectrum from it was unfair, we tried to make it a little fair, and now it's unfair again in certain areas. So I think what we're seeing here is trying to neutralize it again and just make the system more equitable. And, 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 I, and I understand when, you know, I give you ten of something, you want to keep ten of it. You don't want eight of it. Because you have ten, and there's no reason you have to give up ten. But they might take away all of it if you don't agree to eight. And that's what this layoff is here today. Well, you need to drop that. But some people are hard. suggesting that that things you have lost, that's that brother or sisterhood aspect of it. When you find that some members are going to be stuck for a long time, say, okay, I've got mine. So I will vote against it. So what if some of these newbies in the administration get to you know, lose a job? Exactly, and that was another dynamic at work. This is used to be the same system. That was another dynamic at work in this vote. You had people that were there for that had been at their job for a very long time that knew they wouldn't be part of the layoff group if they if the concession deal went down. And the newer people, they were afraid. You know, so they wanted to vote for it because they didn't want to get laid off. You know, and there were there were so many issues at work here and so many dynamics kind of like throwing all the balls up in the air and figuring out hopefully they land where they land. You know, I think it was a lot of gambling and there's a lot of risk with a lot of people that, that voted. And I know that after the fact a lot of them wish they could do it over again. Well it sounds like there is a possibility of sort of thoughts reworking and so forth. Uh, well, that seems to change minute to minute. At first, after um, the deal was was voted down, and we went back into special session last week, and then there was talk about, okay, let's maybe re-vote on it, and then they said, no, we're not going to re-vote on it, and then there was, well, let's have a new deal, and there was, it wasn't a new deal, and I think as of now, out there, there's, you know, there's talk that maybe it'll come up with a new deal. You know, I don't, I don't know because literally within a 24-hour time period, that's going to be, you know, the word we get on that. 